Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are going to take a garden tour of the two shade beds here at the entrance to the nursery. We've been here several times this year already and I wanted to kind of give you an update. Here we are in the middle of August on how things are looking in our North Carolina Zone 7B gardens. We are out here pretty early in the morning so we can get um, some good light, but we're going to start with the what we just call the sign bed because it's the sign to the nursery and the entrance in here. And then we're going to wrap our way around and do the woodland garden on the other side of the fence. You were with us this spring when myself and my mom and Randy planted this flower bed. This flower bed is gosh four years old, four to five years old. Um, and we created it to, you know, provide a beautiful entrance here to the nursery for our customers. It does stay in the shade the vast majority of the day. This front little corner will get a little bit of afternoon sunlight. So I plant it accordingly. This is a beautiful mix of we've got trees, we've got shrubs, we've got perennials, and then of course I always fill in with some beautiful annuals just to have fun. So we're going to kind of give you an update and how everything is doing. I'm really happy with how this bed looks in the middle of August in North Carolina, especially after the week of temperatures that we have had. I mean, we've had heat indexes in like 106. We've had dew points of 80. Um, I mean, it's just been oppressively hot and humid. And for this bed to look like this, this time of the year, I am very happy. Yes, you're going to see some wear and tear. What garden in the South does not look a little worn and torn in the middle of August? So we're just going to kind of work our way this direction. One plant that, there, well, there's several, but I have been highly impressed with this Pagoda Dogwood. This is the Golden Shadows Pagoda Dogwood from our friends at Proven Winners. And this is a really fun, beautiful, ornamental dogwood. It has more horizontal branching on it than it has um, like vertical interest really nice like the coloration on this is just gorgeous jerry come in here and get um show the pe show the people's all the color so you can see we've got this, this you know the new leaves are nice by color with kind of that chartreuse edge darker center um yeah and it is doing great it has grown leaps and bounds since when we first put it in so very happy with this the ajuga it's doing its thing. I mean, it, whatever. You know, we love ajuga, but sometimes ajuga can get a little um, out of control. It really took off this winter, and then this summer, spring, it's kind of died back some. So this is kind of one of those little areas that's kind of like, what are you doing? I, I don't know. Um, over here. Now, you know, I think probably by now that I'm a really big fan of impatience, um, both sun patients that can take the sun and then impatience that are more shade tolerant. They're just beautiful. They're low maintenance. They're not heavy feeders. Japanese beetles don't like them. Um, you get beautiful color on them. This one has that gorgeous dark foliage with that bicolor of a flower on it. And it's just lovely which leads in quite nicely to the new Wygilla from Proven Winners. This is bubbly wine. And I have three of these bubbly wines in here. And when we put them in, they were very small. Like their root system was not very strong at all. Um, so we had to be really tender with them. But these are going to be um, mature size, a three by three, which makes it great because when they were tiny, right? What did I do? I came in here with annuals and filled in around. Next year, I'll still probably put annuals in here, but not nearly as close and not nearly as many. They will be in here to accent this bubbly wine. So really excited to see how this overwinters and how it does next spring. Now, you saw us plant the lemon blush caladiums. Haven't they filled in nicely? I mean, they have really completely filled in this whole little nook between the rhododendron, the rock, the impatience, just really filled in here, brings in that pink from the impatience. You get a little bit of it, some of the colors, a little bit of brightness, and then, oh my gosh, right here in the front, we have got the chocolate drop coleus, color blaze chocolate drop. I adore 
coleus. If you haven't picked up on that, love coleus. This is a trailing coleus. So not only can you put it in a pot, y'all use it as a ground cover. I mean, dear heavens, look at that. I have pinched it back just a few times when I'm coming up to get the mail or whatever, and I'll just pinch it back. But the Color Blaze can do sun or shade. That's why we have it in the front because it is more sun tolerant than maybe some of my shade impatience. Um, but just lovely. And notice there's no weeds in here, right? So that's a great tip if you're having struggles with weeds and managing weeds. Put some type of ground cover, even if it's an annual like the, um, the coleus, right? So I'm going to work my way back in the bed uh, so that way you're not looking at my backside. All right. The, we have um, perennials back here, perennials, trees, um, hostas. They, we have some in substance, so we have four some in substance. We've got two on this side, we've got two on that side, and then we've got a, I believe this is Elegons. Elegons is showing a little bit of a wear and tear, right? So she's got a little bit of the yellow on the leaves. Um, that could just be because it's August and our hostas are starting to show a little wear and tear, but nice and big. Now don't ask me why she is big and then we have another big, huge, massive sum and substance and then this little one next door is very small. Who knows? I mean, there really is no rhyme or reason on that, but these guys, of course, always stay here, right? So they're always here coming in filling in with those impatience, right? Gorgeous, dark leaf, really nice purple. And so I've mixed them in here. So you can see I've got the pinks and I've got the purples. I just think they play off of each other really nicely. The ferns back here, we've got, um, this is lady in red fern and they have responded so much better um, since we got the mulch in here, the compost mulch in here and of course got the irrigation running because those lady ferns do enjoy the moisture and they are doing well so they're in here um, great perennial i love this fern and then little fat albert fat albert is like a blue pine probably could use more sun but i keep holding out for fat albert i just want him i just think he's nice right so he has a nice little texture to him he's a great color um yeah I, I just really like this plant very a lot. You will notice also that we have through here Pegasus begonias. So Pegasus begonias are going to be a foliage begonia and they are definitely rated for the shade. They can do a little bit of filtered sun, but they, the, <laughs> again, look how huge this is. This is one plant. Clearly there's something going on in this area right here as far as food or water because the impatience are huge. The sum of substance is huge, and so is Pegasus. Now, yes, there is some wear and tear on here. We have gotten some really massive thunderstorms with high winds and heavy rain that probably just came in here um, and just broke up the leaves a little bit. Again, from a distance, all looks well. We're not gonna worry about that. If it does bother you, you could easily come in here and cut those leaves off. It is no big deal. Um, the grass. Oh my gosh, y'all, this grass has done so well. Now I know right now you really can't see it from the road because all the other perennials and things are taking um, kind of the, the show away. But this is that beautiful uh, Everillo grass. If I'm incorrect, I will put the new name up there, correct name up there. But we replaced the grasses that we had here with these guys because these are going to be evergreen grasses. So even in the winter time, this is when they're going to shine. My lower petalums, of course, are evergreen shrubs. Really prune those back and look how nice and tight they are. Beautiful. So just imagine in the winter time with the annuals and the perennials dying back, you've got the beautiful grass up against the dark contrast of these lower petalums. Great, great contrast to them. The, we've got caladiums in here, um, more around here. We'll go around this way. Uh, Jerry has the fun task of trying to keep up with me and uh, knowing where I'm gonna go in these garden tours. So we're gonna start kind of in the front here and we'll work our way back. Another wagilla that we have in here is the Vino Verde. I've got 
what oh yeah i do have three i've got three of these vino verdes now these went in as a three gallon shrub and i love vino verde because they have a great color to them a nice kind of that green and a little bit of black in there and they just really kind of accent this flower bed of course more impatience um, in there with we've got this is one of my favorite eucharas this is lemon love Lemon Love Euchara is a Velosa type species of Eucharas, which are native to the Southeast United States. So they can handle the heat and humidity that life in North Carolina throws at them. So they are doing really well. And these are semi evergreens. So you'll see this even in the winter time, you'll have foliage with that. We have the uh, Euonymus. This is the, the name just went out of my head. We'll find it. It's a euonymus, though. It is a beautiful evergreen, um, like a small shrub tree, right? Not shrub, small tree. So it'll get some height to it, fill in, and just be a nice kind of a bicolor with those darker centers, creamy white edges. The new foliage will have a little bit more of a yellow edge tinge to it down here. Um, but just a nice evergreen, and I just kind of keep this shaped up, right? Every once in a while, we'll come in here, like we got a long limb right here. You could come and just pinch that back a little bit and keep it a nice tight branching on that, which the color provides a lovely contrast with the Japanese maple. So the Japanese maple um, is here, different kind of texture, right? We've got a hard waxy leaf. Then we have a nice soft, um, very lacy leaf to it, darker color, beautiful. And it's, it's hanging in, it is doing well. You know, I wasn't sure how this was gonna do in the flower bed, but it is doing really, really well as is old oh, pufferfish pufferfish um <laughs> this spot is just tricky y'all i'm just telling you because you think okay it gets good sun because the sun sets right here and it's hot afternoon sun but if you know pufferfish then this is not as thick as the flowers should be so this is probably still a case of the plant's healthy and it's happy and it's doing well but it's not getting enough sun because if it were getting the sun that it needed like the one that's down in the berm i would have massive heads of flowers on them so probably pufferfish is going to get moved i'm just this is just the struggle bus area right here for me so if you have something that would be a shrub that you can think of that would be really pretty here i need a little bit of height because i've got these are the good old classic Annabelle hydrangeas, which in the spring are just stunning. But I want something with a little bit of height here. So I would love your help and tell me what I can put here. Clearly, it's not enough sun for a panicle hydrangea. So maybe four hours of sun that it gets. We'll see. So throw me your best suggestions. Um, more of that little uh, ribbon here of the lemon blush caladiums. I fill it in there because I was thinking that these guys were not going to come back because i planted them in the spring we had an unseasonably cool spring which was great for us caladiums not so much and they've done okay um <clears throat> i don't think it's the caladiums fault i think it's just you know the weather that we had and, and the way they did um i think we about covered everything in here um i do have some astilbes in here somebody was asking about astilbes they're nice and big. Um, they're between the grasses and the hostas. Um, but moving on down around over here into the woodland garden. So the woodland garden is a new bed. We created that, this bed, this late winter, early, early spring, because the idea is to fill this area in. And this is definitely a very a shady bed that has these massive oak trees that they have to compete with with water both of these beds were put on irrigation this year so i only run it though uh, maybe once a week for 45 minutes we've had great thunderstorms and rain so i have not actually run the irrigation on these beds um, and i think in like three weeks so it has been a while since i have run the irrigation now oak leaf hydrangeas i do adore oak leaf hydrangeas and we have got um, four here and these are the ruby slippers now in spring early summer these were absolutely stunning and they are still beautiful but this is 
this is called life in the south. So life in the south is that it takes your um, hydrangea blooms and maybe we're in cooler northern climates or drier climates, they'll keep that nice kind of that mauvey color. Us, they just turn brown. So I could come in here and just trim off the blooms if I wanted to, um, to clean up the plant. Honestly, it does not bother me. Like I've got this one right here that does have some little bit of that mauvey color to it. Um, but these are doing really well. They, for the first year being in the ground, not even a whole year being in the ground, I've got lots of beautiful growth on them. And then like with other oak leaf hydrangeas, the foliage is gonna be stunning this fall. Nice, really rich burgundy. But Ruby Slippers, really happy with it. Very happy with how it has grown. Um, yeah, and, and doing great. So we've got those in there. Look at these guys. So stinking impressed with this Eucara. This is that Dolce Wildberry from Proven Winners. Y'all, I mean, when I say I've done nothing to these plants except I planted them, used Biotone, clearly this is the spot for them because, oh my gosh, they're just fabulous. So the Dolce Wildberry Eucara, just a great, great plant doing really, really well. Throughout here we've got, and we're not going to go plant by plant, I just kind of wanted to kind of give you an overview. Um, there's camellias. We've got beautiful camellias in the back. We have both japonicas and sasanquas. So this one is um, autumn spirit and autumn spirit is going to be a sasanqua. That means that it's going to bloom in the fall. The reason I can say it's a sasanqua, look at this. I want to show you something. Um, one, it has small leaves, right? So a sasanqua has a small leaf. Do you see what that is right there? That's a flower bud. So that means I've got buds on here. All throughout here, there are buds. So that means I'm gonna have beautiful flowers come this fall from this camellia. If you have problems with your camellias where they form the buds and then they just drop off, they like dry up and drop off, that is a water issue. So your camellias like the water. So once they have formed those buds, they need to get consistent water. And that tends to be a problem this time of year because it's hot, it's dry, they're under stress. So if you notice that with your camellias that they have buds, make sure they're getting consistent water and that will make a big difference with them. Whereas this is a Sasanqua, over here we have a Japonica. Japonicas are gonna bloom in like from like wintertime, January through the spring. I know it's a Japonica because it has a big, the leaf on it is much, much bigger. So you can notice that a much bigger leaf on it. And um, yeah, so that's an easy way to tell the difference between those plants. Yes, this bed, there are certain things that need a little bit of love and a little bit of help. But again, less than a year old, what we're looking at six, six months, if even six months being in the ground. And so I tell you, remember, um, you know, like this hosta. Yeah, it looks good from a distance, but is it primo and perfection? No, it's not. Does that bother me? No, it does not. Um, because we're going for longevity here. Remember, with your plants in general, the first year they sleep, second year they creep, and the third year they leap. So it takes some time, especially with your shrubs, your trees, your perennials, time to get established in here. This area, however, is doing really nicely. Um, you saw us put these in here. We've got more of those lemon blush caladiums. We have got the hostas in here. Um, just a nice mix of on, on all the different plants. And then, my gosh, look. Look how great this container is doing. So this is, you were with me again when we planted this. This is that Savannah Urn from Unique Stone. We have got that Lady in Red Fern. We have got a Brunnera. We have got this sweet little um, Hosta. And then of course we have got a Euchre in there. All of these are perennials. I can leave them here all winter long. Um, the Feather Falls grass and the Euchre are gonna be my semi evergreens. So even in the winter time, we're gonna have some structure while the Fern and the Hosta are gonna disappear. Um, so everything is, is doing nice. I will come down here. Let me show you this. This is another thing that I was, um, you know, I always tell you that gardening is just one big experiment, one big science experiment, and you're just kind of playing around with it, especially when you have these new flower beds and you're really just trying to figure out your sun, your water, you know, how things are growing with these trees, you know, are certain trees taking up 
a ton of water? Are you gonna have a wet area? Are you gonna have a dry area? Like what's going on? You just have to have that experiment. So one of those experiments is the black lace elderberry. And the black lace elderberry right here is, um, I've talked with it about, to several people, really great gardeners about it, right? This plant is clearly very happy here in the fact of it has grown like leaps and bounds. It is massive and had gorgeous, be beautiful growth on it. We've even got some berries right here. However, do you notice what color it is? So I think Jerry showed you that it is, um, it's a lovely shade of green, but what is it called? Yes, it's called a black lace elderberry. So that tells me, just like my puffer fish, where it's not performing at its, at its primo, it's not getting enough sun. So it needs more sun as far as, so it gets that beautiful black color. So this late fall, once the temperature is really cool down, I'm gonna move it. So it's gonna go somewhere, I think, in this generalish area. And I do want to limb up these oak tree limbs um, because like I've got a beautiful lemon glow uh, camellia back there and it's just not getting enough sun. So all we have to do is just take out maybe two limbs, these limbs right here that are hanging over um, because they are giving a lot of shade to this area. While that's not a bad thing, but I do need some sun. My Edgeworthia is doing great. It is beautiful, beautiful growth on it, but it's starting to get a little one-sided. The backside here needs to be nice and full all the way around. So you just kind of have to play with these areas and figure them out and say, okay, what is working? What's not working? What do we need to improve? Especially if it's a first year bed or a young bed. And when we say a young bed, I would say that's under like five years. My mama has a mature garden, which I'm about 45 years old. Okay. That's a mature garden. So when you say that, you know, a bed is a young, that could be at least under five years if not more so just trying to figure out what works what's not working what do you need to tweak what do you need to move remember do not be afraid to move plants now yes there's better times to move things that's why i'm going to wait on this elderberry and i'm going to wait and move it when my temperatures start to go down so that i don't completely stress the plant out and lose all of that beautiful growth on it Two that I have been really happy with are these father gillas. So a father gilla is a native plant. This is Mount Airy. So both of these are Mount Airy's. Um, and right now you're like, well, that's just a lovely green shrub. Like what's the deal with that? Well, in the springtime, they do really nice white, like bottle brush blooms before the foliage even pops out. So on the bare wood, you've got these white bottle brush flowers. And then in the fall, wait until the fall. So on the same plant, you're gonna have yellows and oranges and reds and burgundies, all those different colors on these plants. And these will get some nice size to them. So Father Gill is again, a great native plant um, that's gonna give you both spring interest, um, summer structure, and then fall color. Overall, again, very happy with how this is doing. Um, it's, but for example, let's talk about this, time out why certain things are doing better than the other. Look at this caladium, this lemon blush, even the one next door to it, right? Huge, massive. It's, you know, there was absolutely no difference between this one. I mean, look at these leaves on this. Is it not just gorgeous? Really nice, big, beautiful colors. Um, and then you come literally next door and you've got three that are little. I don't know. So you just play with it. You just play. And then of course the hostas in here, um, everybody doing well. Yes, there are messes, there are successes. That is gardening. And again, so we're, you know, you're just trying to keep them happy. And if something's not happy, figure it out and then move it. Maintenance on this. The keys to the maintenance on your shade gardens, especially when you've got lots of beautiful uh, perennials and shrubs in there, Really, you don't have to fuss over them a lot, right? Consistent water is always helpful, whether that is irrigation or not irrigation. You, that is a gardener's choice. So again, I don't run this a ton. Once a week, maybe 30, 45 minutes when needed. 
fertilizing because people ask all the time about you know how do you fertilize your perennials i fertilize them really once a year that is coming out of winter and going into spring think of it like a, a that's been hibernating all winter, right? So a bear hibernates in the winter. What do they do when they wake up in the springtime? They go out and they eat, they're hungry. Same thing with your plants. They're hungry after that winter's sleep and they need that food in order to put on lots of new growth and to have that energy to grow. So you're gonna wanna feed them. As a general rule, plant tone is a great option. I go through bags and bags of plant tone in the springtime because it is as I say, the Swiss Army knife of fertilizers, because you can use it as a very nice, well-balanced fertilizer. You can use it on just about anything and it will benefit those plants. So that is always great. And then once a year, come through and do some sort of like top dressing, either with a really nice compost. Compost is always great for your perennials. Compost, remulch, just add in that organic nutrition to your flower beds so that as that breaks down, it is that slow release, you're amending your soil and you're feeding your soil over time. Because if you add mulch or compost or both um, once a year, in five years, you're gonna have some amazing topsoil. And remember, your shrubs, perennials, the vast majority of them, their roots go more out than they do down. So you're thinking about your top, I don't know, eight inches of soil here, and that's where a lot of the nutrition is because of where your roots are. So hopefully that little tip is a little bit helpful. But the shade gardens for August in North Carolina could not be happier with how they're looking. Um, everybody is, as a whole, is very happy um, and very gorgeous and just creates a beautiful interest here as our customers both come in and as they leave. As always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.